Chapter 22 The next day Naruto had something that would live in his memory forever happen. He had not awoken until about 1 p.m. because of not using QB to restore his chakra and had to do it with rest. He got up and went to town to eat. As he walked through the village he was stopped by and Umbu who informed him to go to the council chambers immediately. Naruto sighed and nodded before flame sheshing to the council chambers. When he got there he saw every one of the council seats were already full and Erishir Tsunade Jiraiya and Rin had all of the council seats but one for his family so he walked up to it and sat down and started to look around. The third walked in a moment later and took his seat as the Hokage and said thank you all for coming on such short notice. As you all are aware we have Erishir Kazama back with us and I wanted to inform you that it is because of the deal the death god made with his son when he took the QB soul away. That's right he has successfully absorbed all of the QB's powers now. Now that explains how Erishir alive. I would also like to inform you that yesterday Orochimaru was killed by Naruto Kazama. Making everyone wide-eyed at hearing a genin that could do that but after seeing him in battle it's no wonder. The third cleared his throat and got everyone's attention and said I would also like to inform you that he also last night captured Itachi Uchiha and killed an S-class missing Nin named Zetsu. Because of his proven abilities I would like to call for a vote to have Naruto automatically advanced and ranked to special Jounin. Hayashi stood up and said pardon my interruptions Hokage-sama but based on what was discussed with a private meeting yesterday with Naruto I would like to have him move to Sanin level since he not only eliminated the snake Sanin he has also showed me proof of conspiracy in my own clan that I had taken care of after the battles last night. As of this morning all branch members of my clan are having their seals removed. The Hyuga Council has also been eliminated and it is all thanks to his spy network. I have also heard from my daughter and nephew about Naruto's reputations outside of this village, sir. The third raised his eyebrows and a civilian council member asked what reputation is that Hayashi. Naruto sighed and said Awa has already issued a flea on sight order when confronting me and labeled me as an SS rank shinobi before I was even a genin because of my advanced Hiratian jutsu that I call Flash Step. I took out 40 jounin when they tried to assassinate my family in the past few years. They call me the second flash of death. Mist has also put me as an S rank shinobi and posted a bounty on my head and they have two names for me I am informed. They call me sexy blonde because I created a perverted jutsu that knocked out 1000 of their ninja when they tried to enslave a village in rain. Rain because of that incident call me music man and Mist has also started calling me the butcher of wave for killing some of their chunins when me and my team went there as bodyguards. Like it was nothing while everyone's eyes in the room were as big as silver dollars. Naruto looked around the room and asked what? It's no big deal. As everyone face faulted. After regaining his composure the third said well I agree with Hayashi idea. Does anyone have any objections? Naruto said pardon me Hokage but what exactly would I have to do if I was given the rank of Sanin? The third said, well you have free leave at any time as long as you check in with me every six months and also you will be responsible as leader of our ninja on any battlefield you are on unless I or one of the other sentence are present. Naruto closed his eyes and pondered a moment and said, before you vote on this I have a request that I believe would be in everyone's best interest. Inoichi asked, and what would that be Naruto? Naruto said, I request that at least 75% of all Chunin and Jounin approve of this decision also. This village has several candidates that could just as easily be given this title than me. If I am going to have to be a leader of these men in battle, I would need their respect. If I don't, they won't follow my orders or go against them, and that could cost lives. Everyone was stunned, and a few had smiles on their faces, and the Nara head said I agree with Naruto request. By making that request, he shows that he understands the responsibility he will be required to take. I say that we should send out some umbu and have them request the vote while we discuss the Uchiha matters. The third nodded and sent the umbu out and said okay since we are waiting on that what is to be done about the Uchiha matter. A civilian said we should kill Itachi. We already have Sasuke. Naruto said not possible. This brought murmurs around the room and the third said I am afraid Naruto is right. It was discovered that Sasuke is sterile so he can never pass on the Sharingan. If Naruto had not captured and made Itachi a doll basically we would have lost the Sharingan forever. This brought the attention of all those who had not already been informed. 
Naruto sat quietly and said I say we request 15 volunteers of the females of the village to be artificially impregnated by a medical worker so that we can breed the Sharingan, but the volunteers would have to pass certain classifications. Everyone was looking at him and the third said what do you have in mind Naruto? I don't have problem with the volunteers, but why classifications? Naruto thought for a moment and said I did some research when preparing to kill the two Uchihas. This brought several shouts from the room in outrage and the third slammed his fist against the table getting everyone's attention and the third said Naruto explain for those who don't know what you are referring to. In a commanding tone. A civilian screamed he wants to kill Itachi and Sasuke. Naruto smiled and said who said I was referring to those two Uchihas. Getting several confused looks. Another civilian said then who are you referring to if you don't mean Sasuke or Itachi? They are the only two Uchihas left. Naruto said that is where you are all mistaken. Currently there are Sasuke Itachi Uchiha Abito who was on my father's team and died on a mission but was brought back to life by a forbidden Kenjutsu and the first Uchiha Uchiha Madara. The last two are the ones I plan to kill. Just then an Umbu appeared and handed a paper to the third who looked at it and nodded before the Umbu left. The civilian asked if what you say is true then why do you wish to kill them? Naruto sighed and said how many tailed demons are there and who is the most powerful one of them. This got everyone's attention and a civilian said nine and Kyubi was the most powerful you more than anyone should know that. Naruto said there are actually ten tailed demons. The last one is a dragon and he was imprisoned by the other nine demons because he wanted to destroy the entire world and make himself and his followers the only living creature. He is also the most powerful. The reason I want to kill the those two Uchihas is because Uchiha Madara was responsible for Kyubi's attack and he is also the servant of the ten-tailed demon. He wishes to free his master so to stop him I must kill him before he gets what he needs to do it. Even though I don't have Kyubi's soul anymore he may still know of a way to remove Kyubi's power so I must not let that happen. Erisher said son why don't you tell them why Madara was responsible for the Kyubi attack so they know the truth and also how Madara is still alive. Naruto nodded and several people agreed with Erisher. Naruto said to cut a long story short Uchiha Madara was given the Sharingan by Kyubi. Kyubi wanted 100 of Madara descendants as payment for the Sharingan he agreed that's why he attacked. To get his payment. As for how Madara is alive Kyubi was no fool and new humans could not live long enough to get his 100 sacrifices so he made it where Madara will live for 1000 years he has 800 left. Unless someone kills him and destroys his body. That's what I plan to do. It will end his quest to free his master and no other village will have to deal with a tailed demon beside the three-tailed and the five-tailed. As for Abito, he may have the one Sharingan but because of the jutsu they used on him he has lost his mind and has all the skills of a jounin but the mind of a six-year-old or younger. I just want to give his soul the peace it was denied. The third asked what do you mean by only have to worry about the three-tailed and the five-tailed Naruto? Naruto sighed and thought take this you assholes and said the rest have already been put in children and besides my future brother-in-law Gara, I have kidnapped and hidden them with trusted bodyguards so that they can live as normal a life as they can without having to experience any more of the pain that I had to suffer as a child as well as protect them from Uchiha Madara. I may have been young but I still remember everything about what happened to me and I don't want any of them to suffer like that if I can help it. That's part of the benefits of being a demon vessel. Photographic memory. I remember how some of the people on this very council called for my life to be killed the day my father here sealed Kyubi in me. I have forgiven, but I don't want another innocent child to suffer more than they have to. The other two demons are currently hiding and I don't know where or intent to find them and incur their wrath. Making several people in the room pale knowing what they did and he remembered it and the man they claimed as a hero sitting there looking pissed and having his son also talk about it and him being probably one of the strongest. In the room. Naruto looked around the room and thought yes vengeance is a dish best served cold. Squam you little bastards and feel my pain every time you see me or my father and fear for your very soul. Ha 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 ha. Yes Naruto does have an evil side and his favorite hobby is making the council pay for his pain everyone seemed in thought for a few minutes and Inoichi finally brought the room out of its dreaded thought as he was not one of the ones who did it but he also never helped but Naruto does not hate him and said what was the criteria you wanted us to look at for the Sharingan breeding. Naruto said they need to be tested for elemental affinities. 
Only those who have fire affinities should be used anything else and odds are the Sharingan won't be able to be used by the children and may also dilute the bloodline. The second thing is they need to come from a family who have reserved ninja or retired ninja as the parents so that way they can learn to control it since Sasuke and Kakashi are the only two who will be able to tell them much about it. If they have advanced training like chakra control and basic ninjutsu and taijutsu skills it should help to ensure that the children will be able to use the Sharingans fully when Kakashi or Sasuke teach them. But I think it would also be wise to have a bodyguard present so Sasuke does not kill them as he will most likely see his brother in them. Last is they should have mental evaluations every six months so we can try and solve the secret flaw of all Sharingan users besides Kakashi. This brought the attention of everyone in the room having never heard of this and Hayashi asked what do you mean secret flaw Naruto? Naruto looked at him and said every Uchiha who has a Sharingan goes through a time anywhere from a few minutes on up of temporary insanity. The only thing that can cure it is the sight of blood from a kill they have made. This brought gasp from everyone and the third said, Naruto, how can you say that? I never saw any evidence of that in all my time as Hokage. Naruto looked at him and said, tell me Hokage-sama how many people died in the Uchiha prison by suicide or went missing. The third's eyes got as big as a silver dollar and he said, oh my. I had never investigated it because of the clan's outstanding performance, but probably at least two a month was reported as mysterious deaths or suicides and a few escapes that were never captured. If what you said is true then, Naruto nodded and said that's the secret flaw of the Sharingan. QB did it as a joke after the second request from Madara. A way to flaunt power in front of the Hugas. To get the power you have to kill their best friend, but the side effect is once you activate it the demon blood from the eye makes you go temporary insane. If we can properly identify the point in the children they become insane then we can hopefully cure it. I wonder how long before Sasuke's hits. I imagine Itachi's was when he wiped out his clan. Hmm. Everyone paled and Inoichi quickly said I agree with Naruto ideas and they should be administered by them. Now did you get the decision from the ninja Hokage-sama? The third nodded and said yes and actually 90% have agreed. The only ones who did not are the ones who have had reports of attacks on Naruto as a child and those who are ready to retire but don't think he is ready for it. I say we vote on it now. Everyone voted and they approved with a 75% vote. The third said Naruto is now a Sanin of the Leaf Village. What should his type be? We have a frog and slug and though Naruto has a snake contract, I don't think he likes that Naruto thought for a moment and smirked and said, call me the Fox Sanin. I will be thought of with QB anyways and since it seems I got the better of him might as well use it. But he thought it is actually my way to pay my respect to you Q my friend. Everyone voted and agreed. Hayashi asked Naruto last night when we were having the clan meetings you displayed an eye bloodline. What is it may I ask? Naruto said I created it with the knowledge I got from Kyuubi as a way to put me on even footing with Itachi Abito and Madara. It was how I was able to trap Itachi in his own mind by letting me fight evenly with him in the Jinjutsu world of the Sharingan but it won't be any need for concern as I will be the only person who has it. I refuse to let my children have it. This brought murmurs in the council and a civilian asked, why won't your children have it? Naruto said simple, I have most of QB's knowledge, but not all of if and I refuse to take the risk that I make a mistake with it and cause insanity like QB did with the Uchiha's. If only I have it then, if any flaws appear I can fix it and not worry about it. Unless you want another clan that could one day wipe themselves out or worse the village. Who am I to go against the council and the Hokage's orders? Several people quickly screamed, that's all right, we agree with your decision, Naruto. Getting a smirk from Naruto. Hayashi asked, what of Haku, the girl who came with you from Wave Naruto? I hear she has an ice bloodline. Naruto nodded and said, yes, she does, but as I explained to the guards the day I brought her and her adopted father here. They have the protection of the Kazama clan, and I also give her the right to choose who she has a family with. I talked to her about it, and as long as she produces two children, I would not let the council force her into an arranged marriage or breeding stock. Two children will be more than enough to start an ice clan in our village. Within 40 years, we could have up to 20 members as soon as one male is born. I believe that the council would agree with that considering that she is the first ninja in her family since the mist refuses to let bloodlines be ninja after their war with them. She might be able to show other clans from mist the treatment she gets here and maybe swing them to our village. 
I don't believe forcing one clan would be wise if we can get, say, ten clans with bloodlines by not forcing it. Making everyone in the room see his point of view. The third looked around the room and said, Naruto, how the hell are you so damn mature? You have made every person in this room see your point of view on every topic that we have discussed. Naruto looked at him and the rest of the room and said, Simple, I had to develop a strong mental resolve to stop Kyuubi from talking me into removing the paper seal on his cage. This got looks from everyone and Erishir said, What do you mean by that, Naruto? Naruto smiled and said, Simple, if at any time the people of this village hurt me enough to want to give up living, all I had to do was walk up and remove a simple paper seal that was the contract with the Shinigami, and I would have let QB free. It's a way for the container to tell if the creature being sealed has paid its crime. It's a good thing I was strong enough to deal with the pressure or this village would be nothing but ash considering no other parent would have gave their child after they saw what this village did to me. Also, it's a good thing the third protected me or QB would have been free and back in less than a year. The ceiling was made to last the life of the vessel. If I had not lived long enough to get at least half of his power, he would have been freed. But that's my opinion. And thought scorn my little bitches. Everyone paled and almost everyone was thinking while he talked we were so fucking lucky. By the look on Erisher face our luck may have ran out. Shit, we're going to die the third smirk to himself as several people squirmed in their seat under the bored look of Naruto and the killing looks coming from his parents and grandparent. Just then the council chamber doors open up and a Chunin ran in and said Hokage-sama. Uchiha Sasuke has left the village and killed a guard a few moments ago when he tried to get to his brother. Before anyone had time to react, Naruto disappeared and reappeared a few moments later in the middle of the room that had everyone standing and going toward the door with Sasuke who looked confused as he was launched toward the walls as nearly the speed of light and was planted head first into them making everyone shocked and wince at the speed he was captured and his arrival. Flashback a few moments before as Sasuke was jumping tree to tree he was in mid-jump when he felt someone grab him and by the time he had time to react he was already back inside the council chambers and was still traveling at great speed and hit the wall hard lodging his head in the wall. Flashback end as Sasuke pulled his head out of the wall, he turned and saw Naruto standing in the middle of the room and everyone else was looking both shocked and pissed. Sasuke said why the hell was I brought back to this damn village? The third said for murder and becoming a missing name. Sasuke said please this village won't hurt me in the last Uchiha and this town kisses my feet and bows before me because my family is royalty. Naruto asked can I please shut him up? Getting a nod from the other clans as well as the Hokage Sasuke snorted and said like you coo as Naruto disappeared and then he felt someone hit his neck and he fell to the floor passed out. Naruto sighed and said he's alive. I just made him pass out from a pressure point. Everyone was amazed by Naruto's handling of the Uchiha. As Naruto was about to return to his seat a dog ran in and started barking and Rin Naruto and the dogs mastered some all burst out laughing and everyone looked at them and Rin asked so when's the wedding? Tsum said if he is still a man after he gets out of the hospital I would say after that. With a smile on her face. The third said what's so funny that it had to interrupt our meeting. Tsum said apparently Kakashi and my daughter Hannah had a little altercation earlier and he is currently in the hospital having his wounds healed. Kakashi called his summon dog out to help and it bit him in the groin after seeing who he was with. He refused to let go unless Kakashi agreed to marry Hana. Kakashi did and that's what is so funny. Flashback with Kakashi Kakashi walked to the Inazuka home with Kiba behind him holding a leash around his neck how you might ask that happen. Simple. Akamaru grabbed his book and was ready to piss on it unless he put it on so here we find Kakashi being lead before Hana. Hannah smiled and took the leash and said thanks Run. Now Kakashi what was this I heard last night about you wanting to go out with me? Kakashi said I don't know what you're talking about. Hannah said fine prove it by summoning that dog Puckin and if he agrees with you I will believe you. Kakashi thought for a moment and summoned Puckin and Puckin looked at Hannah and Kakashi and said so you finally going to do it. Kakashi looked at Puckin shocked and asked do what? Puckin jumped up and bite Kakashi in the groin and mumbled ask her to marry you or I bite harder. I am not your therapist. Kakashi winced in the pain and said Hannah marry me please. Hannah smiled at the dog and walked over removed Kakashi mask and kissed him before biting his neck and said to show you mean it. No more porn. And grabbed his book and threw it in the air and burned it with a katan jutsu. 
Kakashi was crying, but if it was from the loss of his book or the dog on his manhood, who knows? He just shook his head yes and Puck and let go and said, tell Naruto thanks and I want another poker night. I love the back rubs I got from the wolf summons. And left in a puff of smoke. Flashback in, the council laughed at that and the third said, I call this meeting over and I have a genin to deal with. As everyone left the room. Chapter 23 Naruto had left the council chambers and started to walk through the village pretty much ignoring anyone and anything. He had the feeling he was forgetting something. He thought let's see Orochimaru dead dad's alive Itachi a vegetable Sasuke sterile and in trouble Sakura got laid and her dreams are ruined now Zetsu dead Kabuto dead Zabuza and Haku alive Gar seals. Fixed mom's here, my family's here, I got respect Danzo, and the two stooges have been taking care of sound is pretty much screwed, the third's alive war has been stopped, now what am I forgetting? He looks up and sees a couple making out in an ally with a bottle of sake at their feet and smiles realizing what he forgot. He turns and starts looking for his fiancés to see what they were doing. As he was looking he ran into his mother who smiled and said, if you're looking for you ladies, I was told to tell not to look for them. Naruto looked at her and asked why mom. She said simple each of them want to surprise you with their wedding dresses and a few other things so your father and I gave them each a million out of your account and told them to get everything your father and I are taking care of the rings so all you have to do is get your outfit for the wedding and you have 30 days to do it. And she turned leaving a confused Naruto Naruto said how did you get money out of my account? Before she was gone. She turned and said, simple, you gave your father your PIN number when you gave him your memories and I took your debit card. Holding it up smiling and leaf shushing away. Naruto reaches into his pocket and pulls out his wallet and sure enough it was gone. He sighed and mumbled, damn freeloaders, I got two that take my money and two that drink my sake, what's next? As he walked on through the village, meanwhile Inoichi walks up to Hayashi and said, may I have a moment of your time, Hayashi? Hayashi turned and nodded and they both sat down on a park bench nearby. Inoichi said how did you solve the problem with the Hyuga Council so quickly if you don't mind me asking. Guess we all know where Ino gets her gossip habit from Hayashi thought and said simple when Erisher left with Naruto. Flashback the previous night. Erisher had just left when Jiraiya walked over and held out a scroll and said this is everything the Gaki was telling you about. And also a seal he made to protect your family without the servitude seal so you can do what you need to. And handed it to Hayashi before turning and leaving. Hayashi opened it and read a little where his eyes got big and said Niji go and get half of the branch members ready for battle and bring them but tell the council that I want them to stay there to protect the compound and the clan's survival. Niji nodded and left. Hinata walked over and said what do you want to do father? Hayashi looked at his daughter and saw the confidence she had now and said, I'm sorry, daughter, for everything I'd done to you. If I had known what they did, I would have been different. Hinata looked at him with cold Hugo eyes and for a brief moment emotion flew through them and she said, I forgive you, father. The clan was more important. I understand. And walked over to her team ignoring the hurt look on Hayashi's face as he realized how bad of a father he had been. About five minutes later the branch members returned with Niji and one of them asked what are your orders Hayashi-sama. Hayashi looked at them and said today is a new day for the Hyuga clan. When we return to the compound I want all of you to tell the rest of the branch members to get ready for a fight. I have been given proof that it was the council that had killed my wife and also the council who had arranged for Hinata to be kidnapped as a child and my brother's death. For this and several other crimes, I am leading the family in removing the council, and when that is done, we will be removing all seals from every branch member and uniting the family under one house. Murmurs could be heard from the branch members, and one said, What of the family secrets, sir? Hayashi opened the scroll and said, This seal here is a gift from the Kazama family, which I would like to let you know Erisher Kazama is back with us alive now, and they were the ones who gave me the proof. This seal will go on the entire family with me being the first to get it to show you that this is not a lie. It's just like the cage seal, but the subjection seal has been removed. Since we all will have it, there is no need for two houses anymore. And all the branch members were shocked by this news. Niji said, when do you want us to be ready, Hayashi-sama? Voicing the general question. Hayashi said, one hour after we return to the compound, but don't alert the council until we get to them. All of them said here, and headed back to the compound. End flashback. 
Hayashi raised the hair off of his neck and showed Inoichi the seal and said we eliminated the council forever from the Hyuga family. Inoichi smiled and said about time my friend about time. A voice from the tree above them said agreed. Startling both men as they looked up and saw Erisher sitting there. Hayashi said what do we owe the honor of your visit Erisher? Erisher said simple this is an invite to my son's wedding next month. You are both invited with up to five members of each family. I just wanted to hand them out personally to each clan and important guest so they can see him back. As he handed them the invitations. Hayashi nodded and said the Hyuga clan will be there for the wedding of the new Sanin. Inoichi said so will we but I do got one question. Why did you not get offered the position of Sanin? Erisher looked darkened for a moment and said the same reason I won't be Hokage again. This village lost a lot of respect from me and the only reason I have not killed most of it is because Naruto asked me not to. Even if he was not my son I still would have refused because I left one simple request to see him as a hero and from what he showed me with a memory jutsu his early life he was not seen as even human. That's why I refused both offers when I was given the choice. Both men bowed their heads in shame and a civilian walked up a little drunk and said so you are alive Yandame sama are you going to kill that demon that took over your son's body? That had to have been the stupidest thing a person could have said at that moment as three figures turned to look at the civilian with so much hate in their eyes the man literally had a heart attack from the key and death. Glares he got as Hayashi had activated his eyes with a look that promised extreme pain in which he had pulled out a kunai and had a smirk that would have made Orochimaru back up in fear and Erisher powered up two raisin gans. That had wind manipulation started in it. Garo walked by and looked at the three men and inside his head he heard Shikaku say back away slowly and don't make any sudden movements and they may not kill you. Gara thought back what's wrong. Shikaku thought they frightened me. To even breath near them might be enough to end your life. They make me and the other demon lords look like saints compared to what their looks promise. Just back away and get. The. Fuck. Away. Now. Gara had never heard Shikaku say he was scared of anyone but Naruto and even then it was just a little. For him to act like this is bad. Gara left the area quickly and saw his sister standing out front of a store and he ran to her and she looked at him questionably and Gara said Shikaku scared. Tamari blinked and asked what happened. Having known only Naruto could do that to Shikaku. Gara said the blonde guy from last night, the Hyuga head and Naruto father, all three frightened him with a look and they killed a man with just the look. Tamari said you're not making any sense Gara. Gara started to say something when a drunk man bumped into Tamari and said excuse me I am looking for the demon boy. I want to beat some shit into him again like I did when he was a kid, hiccup. Tamari and Gara both looked at him and were planning to do extreme things to the man when an umbu appeared and said not another one. As he hit the man on the neck knocking him out. Tamari who had pulled out her fan and Gara who had made a bat out of sand with a kuniya being held in the end of it blinked and looked at the umbu and said what do you mean another one and what's going on? The umbu sighed and recognized them as Naruto future family since all umbu received bios on them from the Hokage and said after that battle last night and Naruto sama stopping the revolt all the bars in town opened up and served free beer to everyone to cheer for the return of the Yandame death of Orochimaru and also the winning of the battle. The civilians got into it heard and some of the bars did not close until a few hours ago and the umbu as well as most of our sober ninja are out trying to stop idiots like this from starting trouble. Somehow it is only civilians that are causing trouble though. The Hokage said if anyone is seen walking or acting drunk they are to be arrested till they sober up. An explosion to the south of town was heard and everyone in the village blinked and suddenly the shouts of you unyouthful citizens dare not only to insult Naruto-sama but also have the composure to insult. Not only the power of youth but try and remove my youthful outfit. You must die. A second shout said yes guy sensei let's show these unyouthful citizens the error of their ways. If we miss one unyouthful citizen then I will destroy all of you hip rivals book and chain myself to him while making him wear youthful outfits across town in the hospital a window shattered and a voice could be heard yelling oh hell no no one is putting that damn outfit on me and I am not being chained to anyone who has won. Look out world here I come. And he jumped out the window of the hospital still in a hospital gown. Naruto, who had sitting on the Hokage monument to watch the fireworks, pulled out a bag of popcorn and watched the show while thinking that's what I forgot. 
I told all the bars and restaurants that I have part ownership of I wanted them to have free sake after any battles so our ninja moral support would go up and they could take the money out of my party account. I wonder what will happen now. With a small glint of amusement in his eyes. A shout from Guy said, yes, my hip rival, let's show these people the follies of their ways. If someone defeats more than me, I will give up my youthfulness. Correction, that had to be the stupidest thing anyone has ever said. At that moment, all ninja in the village stopped, blinked, and blinked again, even if they were not helping before with the citizens as the words registered in their minds, and every ninja in the village cracked their knuckles and thought, he's going down. And all of the citizens who were drunk and causing trouble all had one thought going through their minds. We're fucked. The Hokage himself jumped out of the Hokage Tower in full battle uniform with Enma in his staff form looking for anyone who had a sake bottle or smelled of it. Anko had her snake summons out looking for drunks Tintin, pulled out every trap scroll she had on her, and went to town. Niji was striking every civilian in town no matter what with a knockout shot of gentle fist while counting in his head. Similar scenes throughout the village could be seen. Naruto, who was still on the Hokage Monument, sent out mass Kage Bunshin into the village, hinged into civilians, and had them take a bottle of sake with them to get more civilians into the action. Sakura, who was crying after she heard about Sasuke not being able to have kids, was sitting on the steps of her home when a man walked up to her and said, Here, drink this, and it might make you feel better, and handed her a bottle of sake before walking away. A moment later Sakura, who was still looking at the bottle, was pinned to the wall by ninja wire as snakes crawled up her legs and a staff hit the step where she had been a few moments ago. Unable to comprehend what was going on, Niji appeared and knocked her out and said, That's forty for me, and ran to find his next target. The third said, Damn it. Let's go, Enma. As he jumped up on a rooftop. At the gates of the village a man with a black cloak and red clouds and a scythe was looking at the village and he said even my gods say not to go there today. Let's go. The man beside him said no bounty's worth that mess. And left the village but stopped when a figure appeared in the road ahead of them. The figure stood and up straight and said I know why you're here Atasuki I am sure you love the fact you can't find the rest of them besides me and my and the one tail. I have a message for your leader. The one who had the scythe said, why should we? He stopped when a knee hit him in the gut and his scythe fell to the floor in three pieces and was knocked back ten feet. The figure stood and said, I am Naruto Uzumaki Kazama, the vessel for QB. Tell Madara that his plans have already failed and his master will never be freed. I have all the vessels hidden but Shikaku and if he disappears I kill the rest. If he wants to fight me, tell him that in one month I will face him at the Valley of the End and tell him that no matter what one of us won't be leaving alive. If he don't show, they will die also ruining his plans. If by some miracle he can defeat me, I will tell him where they are. Now be a good little bitch and leave my village before I send you to your god and crush all five of your hearts. I know what you did to the first Hokage and I won't go easy on you. I've already defeated Itachi Orochimaru and Zetsu. I know Toby Kisame Sasori Deidara, and you two clowns won't be a problem to kill. Now go looking at the man who was beside him before leaving in a swirl of flames. Neither figure said anything as they looked at each other and left quickly to inform their leader. Naruto smiled as he left to go home that evening, but he pulled out a bottle of wine to drink on his way to the forest of death when a bunch of chunins who did not know him appeared and got ready to arrest him when a kuniya came and broke his sake bottle. Naruto looked down at the bottle and his hair covered his eyes and at that moment everything in the village stopped. All sound all fighting a heartbeats. Why you may ask? Naruto said that was a 1,000 year old battle of wine. It costed me $400,000 and only two bottles of it left after that one in the world. Somebody is going to pay me back for it. In a voice that sent chills down everyone's spines. Naruto flared his key, releasing more than half the people in the world, and he said, Who was it that busted my wine bottle? A man on the roof across from Naruto said, I did demon. Remember me. Naruto blinked and said, Mizuki, how many times do I need to beat you to shut you up? Mizuki said, What are you talking about, Kyuubi? You never beat me. Naruto said, That's right, I just told the Hokage about you planning to steal the scroll. How did you escape prison? Mizuki became enraged and charged at Naruto who merely looked bored and pulled out a kunai and deflected each of Mizuki's attacks with one hand while yawning shocking everyone with his skill and pissing Mizuki off even more. Naruto had enough and disappeared from sight. 
The next thing anyone knew Mizuki was being set airborne by a swift kick. Guy and Lee who both having arrived looked at the move and Lee said that's my. Guy could only nod and said how did he. Naruto appeared behind them while Akage Bunshin of Naruto used Mizuki for a pinball before finishing the Naruto Uzumaki Rendon and said while I walked around different villages I learned to watch their training and fighting and could quickly pick apart the routines and figure out how to do them. I have seen you both sparring while walking to my training grounds. That's how I know that even though I changed it to fit my fighting style. Naruto turned and started to walk away and said perhaps we can spar sometime and I can show you some of my variations and maybe learn some of yours. CYA Leaving an awestruck group Kakashi appeared next to Guy and said how many Guy? Guy blinked and said 73 Kakashi cried and looked around and said anyone beat him. Everyone sighed and 20 different ninjas said we tied with him. Kakashi sighed and said so did I. The third appeared and said I'm afraid that's all of them. Sasuke came walking up and was carrying a bottle of open sake that a guy gave him and everyone turned to look at him and had an evil glint in their eyes. Sasuke said what the hell are you looking at peasants? Screams of agony reached Naruto ears as he smiled before fleeing Shushin home that night. The next day Naruto got up and dressed before going to the library. When he got there he saw his dad looking at a few scrolls and he said so what are you planning? Naruto raised an eyebrow and Erisher said I felt you use your flame shushin yesterday outside the village gates and went to look what was going on. I saw the two Akatsuki figures you showed me memories of so what's going on? Naruto sighed as he sat down in a chair and put his feet on a desk and said I want to end it. With me showing my strength even a little and the fact he can't find the others Madara is going to be coming for me sooner than later so I wanted to make sure it was not a surprise attack so I offered him a choice. Fight me at a battle I chose or loose his Precios demons forever. He won't risk loosing them so he will show. That way I won't risk the village and I won't have to hold back for fear of collateral damage as he closed his eyes. Erisher sighed and said you know you can't defeat them all by yourself. Right. Naruto nodded and said I know their strengths and weaknesses and all but I need to figure out how to get the ones I need to fight to do it. Erisher asked who do you need? Glancing toward the bookshelf, Naruto looked at him and said, I need two Naras Kakashi Tenten Tsunade Jiraiya Asuma Gara Bite Mark Kankuro Use a Buza Guide Lee Anko and at least three other long-range fighters, preferably more and at least one close-range fighter to deal with the other members while I face Madara. Erisher looked at him and said, so do you think they could be used? A voice from behind Naruto said, yes, I know they all could, but I would want them to know who they were fighting. Naruto said, I see you decided to drop the Jinjutsu old man. So what do you think? The third said I want all clan heads and jounins in the Hokage Tower in two hours and I want you to tell us all their strengths and weakness. Naruto nodded before the Hokage left in a swirl of leaves. Erisher said I will get the sand sibs as well as the rest of the family. You get everything ready. As he left the room. Two hours later all the clan heads as well as the rest of the jounins were gathered in the Hokage Tower war room and the third said thank you for coming. Yesterday, two S-class criminals that are part of the group Itachi was a part of until his capture came to the village to gather information. They want all the tailed demons, but as Naruto has told the council they can't succeed since he has absorbed all of Kyuubi's power, but they still want the other eight and we can't let them get them. In one month we are expecting a battle with them because that was what Naruto told them to do in order for the village to be left out of the fighting. Each member of this group is an S-class criminal. One member is responsible for the death of the previous Kazekage. Another member was responsible for the death of the Shodame Hokage. Getting gasped from everyone in the room. Naruto said I know many of you are wondering how that one can still be alive. He has a bloodline that allows him to take the hearts of living humans and replace old ones in his body. He can only hold five but usually has all five in use. I know each member of this group and their strengths and weaknesses. Genma asked how do you know so much about them Naruto-sama? Naruto looked at the room and said before I say anything else I want to make one thing clear. Don't call me Sama. I may outrank some of you but to me we are all equal ninja of the leaf village so just call me Naruto. As for the question you asked. Simple I know about the leader because he was responsible for Kyuubi's attack on our village. His name is Uchiha Madara the first Uchiha. I won't tell you much about him except don't fight him. No one in this room besides myself or Gara can even think to hurt him. 
Hyatt asked why not Naruto. Naruto said simple. How many of you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a person with the strength of an eight-tailed demon? He is that powerful. I can beat him, but it may cost me my life. If that's what it takes to stop him, I will so his master will not be released on the world again. Mankind won't be able to survive him. Murmurs went through the group and the third said the reason why we have to stop them is the master Naruto was talking about is the ten-tailed dragon demon. He is so powerful that all nine of the other demons' lords banded together to seal him away so he would not destroy the world. Now you see why we must stop him and this group. Continue with the rest Naruto. Naruto pulled out a scroll and opened it before biting his thumb and wiping some blood on a seal and out popped a giant poster boards with faces of ten members and some had X's on the faces of Itachi Zetsu and Orochimaru. Naruto nodded and pointed to a face and said first is Tobi he is the product of using a forbidden kenjutsu that used the body of Uchiha Abito who was on the genin team with Kakashi and my mother under my father. He has one Sharingan and is mostly a mid-range fighter fire and earth type user. He does have good taijutsu, but it can be gotten around with teamwork, but his Sharingan lets him avoid most ninjutsu. Jinjutsu are useless, but he sucks at kenjutsu. Next is Kisame, former member of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. His sword is special, which means it does not cut its shaves, and it also eats chakra and can give it to Kisame. Don't try and get it if Kisame is still alive or it will attack you with a self-defense seal on it. Kisame is a water type and is great at kenjutsu but sucks at taijutsu and raitan jutsu. After him is Daidara. He can make explosives out of clay and most of his body is actually clay for his explosives. He is a long range fighter and can make animals out of clay that can do anything that the animal it looks like. He prefers to fly on them. You can beat him with joint long range attacks while in the air but if you can get him on the ground he has almost no taijutsu experience. Jinjutsu is above average. Get close and kill him, but he will kill himself to take you out and has been known to do just that and still live by escaping the blast. He has two hands in his mouth that eats the clay and make it explosive. Haydn is an enemy only a Narav can fight safely. Why I say that is because of his religion and I believe bloodline he does a type of ritual in which a circle appears under him and as long as he is inside that circle he is basically immortal. To kill him you must get him outside of the circle and then completely destroy his head. As long as his head is alive he can be put back together but if his head is completely destroyed he can die. Don't let him get your blood. Part of the ritual while in the circle is the blood he eats during that battle causes any wound he receives to his body to happen to whoever blood it is he has as long as they are within a mile of him. That's why I said Anara is the best fighter since they can force him to walk outside the circle with their clan jutsu. Anyone else will have to make him leave and probably kill one of you allies to do it. He is a mid to close range fighter because of his ninjutsu and also his scythe that he can control with a chain. I broke it when he was here yesterday but he has time to repair it. The next one is a former Suna member named Sasori of the Red Sand. He is a puppet master. He walks around inside of a puppet and has turned every part of his body into a puppet as well except his heart. He looks like a 15-year-old kid in his actual body. He is a master of secret weapons and mid to close range. He has hundreds of puppets he can use at the same time, but the one that is most dangerous is the former Kazakage who had the ability of the Iron Sand, which he has made a puppet. Just because it's a puppet does not mean it does not still have the ability to use Jutsu or Bloodlines. He also uses poison and traps that are hidden in each of his puppet bodies. The next member is Kakuzu who was the one that is responsible for the Shodiame's death. He has an ability to use his body with weird tentacles of chakra that can restore his body from damage. Attack from long range to destroy the mask because that is where his hearts are and if you have to fight close don't let him take the heart of your allies. He can take other organs but mostly just the hearts. That's his weakness. Take out all five and he then you can kill him by destroying his head as well. Any questions? Hayashi said, are there any others we need to worry about? Naruto thought for a moment and said Akatsuki has a habit of using sleeper agents to get their info that they use as puppets once they activate them. I know of two personally. One we killed with Orochimaru named Kabuto and the other was a Sunanin. I know they have others out there so they could bring them to try and use as cannon fodder to weaken me and anyone I brought with me. 
I don't know how many others, but the most it would be would be 50 altogether. Any more and they run the risk of being discovered. One per village is what I would believe. Since Kabuto was the leaf, I don't think anyone else could be a puppet, so that's all I have on them. Kakashi looked in thought and said, How many do you want to take with you, Naruto, for this battle? The third said, I have heard Naruto descriptions of them and their abilities, and we talked about it. This is volunteers only, but I want to try and have a team of at least 20 to go into battle. Those of you who want to get involved meet at training ground 7 tomorrow at 8 a.m. and don't be late if you decide to help Kakashi. The rest of you prepare your families and homes in case the fighting comes here. Asuma asked where is the battle to take place. Naruto said the Valley of the Inns. Fitting really if you think of it. On one side you have the village of Kanoha fighting to protect its lands and loved ones and on the other side you have Akatsuki who want to rule and destroy the world. I got a lot to work on for tomorrow and I hope to see you tomorrow. And left in a swirl of flames. Inoichi said, do you think we honestly should get involved Hokage-sama? The third took a puff from his pipe and said we got involved 13 years ago when QB attacked. I think it's time the leaf returns the favor. Getting a few smirks in the room from that as they all left the room and the third pulled out his Aika Aika Paradise and giggled as he read it. Naruto smiled as he walked into his library. Tomorrow it begins. Chapter 24 now there is a point in every man's life that he realizes that he opened his mouth and inserted his foot. During the meeting in the Hokage's office, Naruto did just that. How does he know that and why is he so sure? Simple. The moment he sat down in his chair in the library, he was instantly wrapped in snakes binding him to his chair. His feet frozen to the ground had a genjutsu hit him making the room dark except for a spotlight shining on his head from above and a giant metal fan hitting him on the head. Nothing really to tip him off right. Now he knew he could get out of this no problem except for the look on the four ladies that were looking at him promising intense pain if he moved. Now Naruto thought back and tried to figure out what happened when Haku pulled out a sunbon needle and held it at his groin and said, so you would die leaving everyone that loves you just like that. Naruto blinked and saw the look in her eyes and thought, oh hell she loves me again. I'm fucked and said, well, I was trying to motivate the others since the men we will face are tough. Wrong answer. Smash his chair was flipped backwards and his head hit the floor and Karina put her foot on chest. Problem was she was wearing high heels. Why you may ask simple when she got the message to come to the meeting she was trying on wedding shoes and decided to get heels. Karina glared at him and said, I don't know what the hell was going through that head of yours, but you are not making me a widow before a bride. Anko had a snake crawl up his pant leg and up to his groin and said, Do you want to find out what will happen if you ever say something like that again? Tamari stepped forward raising her closed fan up above her head and slammed it down beside Naruto's face and said, I will be damned if you think you're going to do a suicide deal like your dad did. Erisher walked in and said, Hey, that was ow wow wow. Rin walked up behind him and grabbed him by the ear and said, He got that from your jeans, you dumb blonde jackass. Come with me while we discuss things dragging him away. After the door closed, Naruto said, look, I'm sorry for what I said, but I have no intentions of dying. In fact, I don't want you to come so I don't have to worry about you all. As soon as the words left his mouth, his eyes got wide as he realized what he said, and then he thought as he saw the looks on their faces, I have faced every tale demon S-class criminals, every Kage angry villagers, perverts, gay snake worshippers, and death itself, and I have never been more scared than I am right now. QB helped me. In the afterlife, QB sneezes and looks at the two men and the teen in front of him and said, so do we have a deal? Both men looked at each other and said, let's do it, brother. A teenage boy looked at them and said, Grandpa, why do you and your brother have to be such idiots? Back with Naruto, he was praying for a miracle. Luckily, that miracle came and speaking without looking in the room in the voice of a super pervert. So Naruto, did you know that Ice Chick wants to choke your chicken also? I think you could have her added to your harem if you want maybe give me some research while you're at it. And then opened his eyes as he felt strong killing intent coming at him from four different people. Naruto thinking quickly and asked innocently Haku what did he mean. Haku blushed red for a moment and Karina said just get another best man and don't worry about it. In fact get two because this one's about to die. And she started doing hand seals while the other woman took off after the pervert. 
Naruto sighed and a chuckle could be heard from the corner of the room and Naruto asked how much of a head start do I have Eero Sanin? Jiraiya said two minutes and then they will have my clone destroyed. Naruto touched the handle of his sword and was freed in a flash as well as breaking the Jinjutsu. He grabbed a scroll that said emergency escape and disappeared in a flash as the four women came back into the room and noticed Naruto was gone and the pervert was in the corner writing in his book. Poor pervert. Naruto crawled into a cot in the tower at the center of the forest of death and opened the scroll which contained clothes, food, and sleeping supplies. Enough for a week and thought always be prepared. The next day when Naruto arrived at the training ground he was surprised by the sight of a waterfall with trees leading up the side of it and every ninja that was at the office was there including the Hokage. Naruto looked at the tree and yelled Yamato. An umbu appeared and said yes Naruto-sama. Naruto asked did you do this because I know only you and me could and I did not. Yamato said no I thought you. He was stopped by a booming voice that laughed ha 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 ha. Everyone looked around on the defensive and Naruto said I know that voice what the hell are you doing here furball I know the damn well Shinigami took your ass. A man appeared on top of the waterfall wearing Shinigami cloths and he said Kit since you completed the deal and got your father revived the Shinigami took a vacation and had me take over for him and since I've been keeping an eye on you I brought you some help. Say hello to the Shodame and Naidame Hokage of Kanoha along with one of their grandson Nawaki. As three figures stepped up on the waterfall, making everyone gasp at the sight of the people who were standing there. Naruto yelled, how are they alive, Kyuubi? Making everyone flinch, realizing who it is standing with the Hokages, finally. Kyuubi said, simple. As the acting god of death, I have the right to bring anyone back to life I want, and since I know what you got planned, I want to be present to take those assholes out for all the trouble they caused me. And this village, though, I will still be the god of death when some of these assholes in this village die so I get to pass judgment on them. Anyways, that's not important. What is important is that with four Hokages, two Sanins, a demon vessel, and the you who are as powerful as a ten-tailed demon, this is going to be one hell of a party to watch. The Sandy Aim finally got over his shock and asked, What do you plan to do, no QB, and what about the people you brought with you? Tsunade had tears in her eyes seeing her brother and her grandfather and granduncle alive again and the show dame said well for starters Kyuubi's not getting involved besides making sure those Akatsuki guys go to hell since he can't take someone's life until it's over. As for me and my brother we're going to help in the fight and then live with our clan here until we die again in one or one hundred years unfortunately we may take our clan out of Kanoha after this battle is over or kick everyone else out for treating our family like shit. Making everyone flinch realizing something, three Hokages, two Sanins. A demon vessel and possible the strongest person on the planet is still pissed at them. Yeet the ear screwed. QB getting a shot and said, now now Hokages, you know they will have to suffer from all their loved ones when they get to the other side. I know everyone who died in my attack are pretty much ready to come back and kill everyone in this village for treating their hero the way they did. Making all those who did pale. The Night Aim created 20 water dragons and said, since you're all here to train first training lesson speed, outrun my dragons or be eight. And the dragons charged into the group of ninja, making some of the less seasoned fighter flee. The show dame said, not without my help, brother. And created 20 earth dragons doing the same thing. Nawaki said, don't forget me. And created two fire dragons, sending them after the sum as well. Naruto blinked and said, well, I know what's going to happen at the Valley of the End now. Kyuubi asked, now what's that kit? Naruto touched the hilt of his sword and 100 dragons appears. 10 earth, 10 water, 10 fire, 10 electric, 10 ice, 10 wind, 10 sand, 10 wood, 10 shadow, and 10 mixed dragons containing every element. The third blinked in amazement as the dragons went out throughout the village chasing every ninja that was at the meeting. Naruto said a lot of shit is going to be blown up making all those related to him laugh. After the dragons rounded everyone back up and brought them back, Naruto created clones that hinged into Akatsuki members and started showing everyone what to expect and how to get by them, and that's how the rest of the time for the month went. The Hokages and Naruto training everyone through Tortu, I mean tough training. As the day arrived for the battle to begin, the ninja arrived at the Valley of the End and Akatsuki were on the other side with an army of about 100 and the leaf had around 100 also and everyone blinked. As the valley floor had been turned into a giant arena and Kyuubi walked into the middle with a microphone and said, Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the millions and millions of souls in the afterlife, 
Let's get ready to. He was stopped as both sides sent all kinds of jetsu at him as he disappeared and appeared on top of the waterfall in a flash of flames watching over both sides with a huge tub of popcorn and six pack of beer and said Mortal Kombat. And he pulled out Naruto in pod and started playing the Mortal Kombat theme making everyone sweat drop. Naruto taking advantage of the distraction touches his sword and disappear faster than anyone can see and then a person on the other side of the valley was suddenly sent airborne and a giant bell sound hit and both sides charged. The fight for the future of the world had just begun Naruto and the person he had kicked both landed on the head of the two stone statues and Naruto said so Madara it seems you finally ready to die. A man with a Sharingan in both eyes looked at Naruto and said I will capture you boy and take the Kyuubi from you and then find where you have hidden the others and take them as well. Naruto said you really are stupid. That's Kyuubi. Pointing to the guy who just threw some popcorn at Madara's head as he flipped a bird also. Madara looked at Kyuubi and said I see well then I don't have to take you alive. And put his hands in a ram seal and said Kai. And suddenly, all fighting stopped as a powerful force of power blanketed the entire area. Naruto looked at him and put his hands in a ram seal also and said Kai and then an even larger force covered the area and then both figures disappeared and only the sound of impacts could be heard. Haku saw a tidal wave heading toward a group of leaf ninja and used her bloodline to freeze it and surf to the top and down the other side decapitating for Akatsuki weaklings and QB shouts out flawless victory way to go sub-zero. Haku thought I don't care if he is a demon when this is over his balls are frozen. A giant clay bird flew up above the arena and Deidre said let me show you art is a bang. Gara looked at him and made himself into a giant version of himself and the music in the area started playing Mr. Sandman yes bring me a. A scratching noise was heard as Gara made his sand arm turn into a giant golf club and smacked the bird Deirdre was on and said four. The music started to play Free Bird Gara looked at QB and thought he's already dead, he's already dead. Shikaku inside him said kill him again, a giant clay snake appeared on the hill and then a giant snake appeared on the other side with Anko on top of it. Anko said Manda go show that snake who the fuck is king. Manda smirked and said with pleasure and both snakes charged each other. Kisame looked at the four people who surrounded him. Zabuza Hayaginma and the Naidame Hokage. He thought how the hell did I get in this mess as he dodged three swords and a water dragon. The Shodame Hokage looked at the man in front of him and asked how the hell are you still alive. The man said I took your heart and several others. The Shodame said really funny you should say that. Did you know that you can use replacement with organs as well? Kakuzu looked at him crazy and asked what are you talking about you can't do that. A voice behind him said really then why did it work? making him jump, but that was exactly what was supposed to happen. The person behind him disappeared in a puff of smoke and then a giant frog appeared on top of him smashing him into the floor destroying one of his masks before the frog went up in a puff of smoke. Jiraiya said got to love that food cart summoning. Kakuzu looked up and saw a foot coming toward him and he rolled out of the way at the last second just as it smashed into the ground and created a huge crater. Kakuzu was about to attack when he felt something was not right. He looked down and saw a sight sticking out of one of his masks and a voice behind him said damn it let me go you damn shadows. My gods demand I sacrifice you. Shikamaru said really. Then let's begin the ritual. And made him pull out the scythe and walk back to the circle he created as his father's shadow reconnected to Haydn and Shikamaru let go to save Chakra. Shikoda acted like he was licking blood off of an imaginary scythe while Haydn did it for real and then he stabbed himself in the heart with the scythe destroying a third mask off of Kakuzu. Kakuzu would have been getting another heart had he not only suddenly being trapped inside a cage made of wood with a second cage over it but also he had bugs eating his chakra at an alarming rate. Shino said my bugs don't like his chakra. His father said when this is over we will let those bugs go and free themselves of this evil. Shino just nodded. Kakashi looked at the man before him with a face mask on and had one Sharingan eye and said, So Abito, this is what has happened to you. Toby said, Abito did only Toby here and Toby a good boy. Watch. And started doing hand signs Kakashi knew. The Chidori and he started doing them also only for a yellow flash to appear behind Toby and a shout of Raisingan was heard as it slammed into his back and then Kakashi ran at Abito and shoved the Chidori into his heart. Rin who walked over said I'm sorry Kakashi. Kakashi smiled a small smile and said remember what Naruto told us during our training. 
Flashback Naruto had created an Earth clone and had it hinge into Tobi, and he was having Kakashi Rin and Erisher try out strategies against it, and Kakashi said, I can't do it. He is a friend. The clone said Tobi a good boy and attacked Kakashi only to stop and Naruto said Kakashi listen. I know you don't want to do this but look at what he has become. Do you want him to suffer for the rest of his life or do you want him to finally have the peace he should have? End flashback Kakashi said he's finally at peace. Making the other two smile a small smile. Just then a huge explosion rocked the area and Manda said who's the king now? Before he went up in a puff of smoke. Sasori looked at the guy in front of him and said, Do you really think you can beat my puppets? The guy in front of him said, Me no, my art yes. And a drawing off a huge eagle appeared from the sky and grabbed Sasori's puppet body and lifted it into the air as suddenly a pair of giant sand hands grabbed it and started to crush it under the pressure. Gara looked to his right as Jiraiya had just summoned Gamabunta and he nodded and held out Sasori's puppet with his sand arm and Jiraiya said, Give me some oil. And Gamabunta covered the puppet with oil and Jiraiya set it on fire. Burning the outside body forcing Sasori out of it showing his real body. As he landed on the ground he was suddenly met with punch in the back of his body from Tsunade who was waiting for an opening. She shouts now Sensei. The third said let's go Enma. Staff. And Enma changed into a staff the extended and went into the hole Tsunade had created piercing Sasori heart. Kisame had cuts all over him and so did the four people he was fighting. He was panting and asked how can you keep anticipating my attacks. The night aim Zabuza and Kakashi who had came over all three started doing hand seals and a huge wall of water came from three sides around Kisame who was about to go under the waves to get away when the water below him froze. And then the walls around him froze as well and a shout of iced sushi Kemaitashi no jutsu was heard from two females and the walls of ice shattered and sliced him deeply all over his body. Only problem was he turned into a puddle of water as he had replaced himself with a water clone. Everyone looked around and saw him running up the side of the walls retreating. Kurinai dropped her jinjutsu and said you guys got lucky I only had enough chakra for a few more minutes to throw off his senses. They all nodded and looked at the battles. Toby and Sasori were dead. Deirdre was nowhere to be seen. Kisame retreated. Kakuzu was still trapped inside the domes of plants, but still had two hearts and the sound of heavy fighting could be heard from the air above them as Naruto and Madara were fighting while jumping off the canyon walls. Shikamaru looked at his dad and said, I've been wondering something since we heard about his mumble jumble crap. What would happen if he sacrificed his own blood? Just then Haydn licked the blood off of his scythe and when he least expected it he decapitated himself. A fire dragon hit the head that was in the air and destroyed it as the body fell to the ground lifeless. Shikamaru sighed and said, I'm glad you taught me the advanced version of the shadow possession or it would have killed me already. His dad just nodded and looked at the fighting. With most of Akatsuki's main forces gone, the grunts had started to flee as the Umbu and Hunter Nins cut off the retreat when they circled around the battlefield. All that was left was Kakuzu Deidara and Madara. Just then the clay bird guard knocked away flew back and changed into Deidre who said I will not let my art end like this. Self-destruct no jutsu. And his body started to change colors as he landed in the middle of the fighting. Naruto yelled Kakashi used the Sharingan to send him somewhere else. Now, as he ducked under a roundhouse kick from Madara, Kakashi revealed his Sharingan and had it change into its final form and then suddenly a black void appeared around Deidre and he reappeared next to Kakuzu and everyone who knew Earth Jutsu, created walls of earth around the cage of trees to block the blast. Gara sent waves of sand to pack the earth and waves of water covered the now solid earth domes and everyone started fleeing from the bottom of the valley. Naruto put his hand on the hilt of his sword and four Kage Bunshins appeared around the dome of earth and water and created the barrier jutsu of the sound four as a huge explosion caused the earth and water to fly into the barrier but it did its job before dissolving by absorbing most of the blast. When the smoke cleared Kakuzu was floating on top of the water and he said I hate art. Zabuza who was panting through his sword into the air and said now ten ten. And Tintin used chakra string to grab the sword and fly toward Kakuzu last mask and destroy it. Kisame who had jumped away during the commotion to flee the bottom and was currently running away from the valley as fast as he could was stopped by a figure that walked out onto a tree in front of him. 
The man had a black cloak but had blood red on the inside, and he had a thin zampakudo on his side and had an aura of power. Kisame asked, Who are you? The man said the name's Ichigo, and I was asked to make sure none of you escaped. And disappeared even faster than Naruto did, and the next thing Kisame knew was his head was falling off his body. A man appeared next to Ichigo and said, Thank you, Shinigami. Have you collected the rest of my kind? Ichigo said, Yes, QB, we have went to the island and got them as well as the ones that were free. All we like is the Shikaku and Gara, and then our deal will be done. You still will have to be punished for this, you do realize. QB said, Yes. My choice all those years ago was finally come to pass as I told him it would. I am still watching over the final battle right now. Ichigo nodded and said mortals are not supposed to possess the ability to live past their time. Hayden Kakuzu Orochimaru and Madara are all responsible for breaking those laws and Yukit as you call him was also on the same path but he gave it up freely and willingly with the deal you offered so he won't be harmed for it. After this is over the Shinigami will no longer have to worry about immortals getting involved in mortal affairs. I don't know what punishment you will face since you knew this would all happen. And QB nodded before going up in a puff of smoke and Ichigo started walking toward the battlefield before changing his looks to appear as the god of death in this world. As everyone looked around at the death and destruction only about 20 ninja had died from the leaf but the main battle was still going. Everyone could still hear the sounds of impact and destruction from all over the valley of the end. Hayashi, who had his eyes activated, said, My God, how strong are they? Kyuubi walked over to them and said, This is the true strength of a demon. That night I came to collect my payment on your village from the Uchiha clan. I only used one tail's worth of power. So far they have not even went past two. This is just the warm-ups. In a serious voice shocking everyone. Erisher asked, what do you mean the warm-ups, QB? QB said, watch patience has never been Naruto's strong point. Just as the words left his mouth, Naruto and Madara both appeared sweating a little with cuts across their bodies that were quickly healing, and Naruto said, you ready to really get started? Madara said, I thought you would never ask, boy. And both put their hands in the ram seal, and suddenly their chakra burst around both. Madara flew a hundred feet into the air and took on the shape of a dragon and Naruto matched his and flew into the shape of a fox and both surrounded each of them in and Naruto eyes changed from blue to red and then a swirl appeared around both of their bodies looking something like a Hyuga ultimate defense. Naruto stuck out his hand and formed a raisin shuriken and Madara who had copied Kakashi Chidori made one and both charged and intercepted just as Naruto and Sasuke did the first time in his life but this time. The ball of energy was at least three times larger. The walls around the valley started to crumble. The trees around the valley started to fly backwards. Everyone who were watching had to use chakra to hold in place. The genins that came to help were having to be helped by the adults. QB did some hand seals and a barrier appeared around everyone to protect them and he said watch your village's true hero and remember what your crimes were against him and try and make amends. As the ball of energy became clear enough for both to see both fighters look deadlocked. Madara said, give up boy you can never win and I will kill you and those pathetic people you brought with you. Naruto said, you will never lay a hand on any of my precious people Madara. Let's end this. First gate Kia. Second gate Kia. Three gate Kia. Fourth gate Kia. And his power suddenly went through the roof. Everyone was in awe and QB said, nice kid, even I did not see you do that. Making everyone look at him questionably. Rin asked, what are you talking about? QB asked, none of you noticed yet. Hyuga don't look at the fighters, but tell me what you see in Chakra around the valley. All the Hugas in the area did so and several gasped and Hayashi asked, what is that? QB said that my friends is the ultimate form of the Raisin Gan. It's a once in a lifetime Jetsu and only the kid could do. Erisher asked what's going on with my son Fox. Hayashi said there are clones around the valley and each is sending massive amounts of chakra around the arena and is rotating in several different directions and is starting to add fire and wind elements into it. Kurinai asked what does that mean? Erisher who was in thought a moment gasped as he realized and said how can he do that? I know he can make an elemental raisin gan but to add fire and wind elements and then to create one the size we're talking about is impossible. QB asked where's Naruto's sword, making everyone look at him. 
Hinata said in the middle of the floor with a clone of Naruto beside it holding on and the sword is doing something I don't know what. Kyuubi smiled and said so he is going to do it. He's destroying his sword and all the power in it to power the jutsu. Anko asked will someone explain in English what the hell the Gaki is doing. Jiraiya said he's living up to his name. He's creating a spiraling maelstrom. In other words, he's creating a tornado with fire, water, lightning, earth, and wind together in it. Kyuubi said almost exactly, but it won't be a tornado, and the reason it is a once-in-a-lifetime jetsu is that it take the power of six gates in the middle and at least seventeen tails of chakra, plus destroying the first gate permanently. Guy gasped and said, but if that happens, then he will never be able to close the gate ever. Haku asked, what do you mean? Lee said basically the gates restrict chakra and can be opened, but they have to be done in order and closed in reverse order. Now I know why you said it's a once-in-a-lifetime deal. After this is over, he will never be able to open the gates again since his body has to learn to cope with having the first gate always open. Guy said he will have to seal some of his power away or he will die from chakra overload, making everyone wide-eyed at the possibility of that. Tsunade said, but you only have nine tails that Naruto absorbed, so where are the other eight? Kyuubi said, simple the sword Naruto had made and designed is equal to ten tails worth of chakra, and the kid himself has opened the first four gates while he gets ready to finish the jutsu before opening the last two he needs. But before he does that he needs to activate the catalyst for this jutsu, and that is when he will release his other tails of power he has in him. So far they are only about four tails worth. Madara must be planning to overpower Naruto after wearing him down a little. Big mistake. Smirking as he watched the fight and remembered when he first met Madara. Flashback Kyuubi was in his den when a human with pale eyes walked in and Kyuubi looked at him as he bowed and Kyuubi asked what is it you human want with me to disturb my den. The man said while still bowed forgive my rudeness Kyuubi sama but I am a slave to my family and I wish to be free. I heard that you have the ability to do it and by changing my bloodline so my family will not hurt me any longer. Kyuubi thought for a moment and said let me look into your eyes. The man looked up and Kyuubi activated a secret that he had in his eyes. He looked into this man's future and saw the events and his being imprisoned as well as the poor boy he would make suffer. He started to kill this man right then and there but decided to see where it ended. As he continued to watch he saw who Madara worked for and also saw a way to permanently imprison the demon forever. Kyuubi turned off his eyes and said yes I can do that and I will give you this warning before I do it. If you have me do this when the time comes you shall be destroyed by the firebird of legends for an act of crimes you and your descendants will do. For me to ignore this crime I demand the sacrifices of you descendants and will make you a half demon that will live 1000 years so I know you will have the time to pay me my price Madara. The man paled wondering how he knew his name but thought of what his master told him about the Kyuubi being a trickster and an idiot so he said I agree Kyuubi sama. Kyuubi sent his chakra into the man and let his eyes change giving him a few moment of insight into the future to aid him. The man thanked Kyuubi and left. Kyuubi sighed and said so it begins Ichigo. A shadow stepped out of the darkness and said are you sure you should trust the fate of the world to this prophecy of yours? What you just did was a great crime to the laws of creation. Kyuubi thought for a moment and said trust the world to my prophecy no, trust the world to the boy who shall change the world. Yes. Ichigo sighed and said I will see you in time Kyuubi. I hope you're right. Kyuubi shook his head and said I am Shinigami. Flashback end. Kyuubi said arise Phoenix and renew the age of man with your fire. Making everyone look at him. Before anyone had a chance to ask what he meant, Naruto smirked and said they say the phoenix was born of fire and died of fire before it was reborn. I learned the truth of that saying in my life, Madara. I learned that I am the phoenix and I say the world is ready to be renewed without you and the evils that you created. And suddenly he replaced himself with the clone who was holding the sword and Madara shoved the Chidori into the clone's heart making it go up in a puff of smoke but not before it kicked him causing all his momentum to stop. He was so caught up in trying to wear Naruto down that he did not notice until know what was going on around him or the fact that they were currently about 200 yards off the valley wall in the middle of the air. And the only thing holding him in place was the energy him and Naruto were using. Without the opposite energy gravity finally started to pull him toward the valley floor. Naruto shouted chakra waits kai gravity waits kai blood seal kia. And the sword Naruto was holding shattered and the power flew from it into Naruto body since he was holding the hilt. 
Naruto then shouted fifth gate Kia. Sixth gate Kia. Creating a sphere around him. Naruto looked at Madara and through gritted teeth said it's time. Arise Phoenix from you immortal ashes. And the clones all around the valley started to do hand signs and a chakra line connected them all together causing all the elemental energy and to combine and ignite. The chakra strings all zoomed onto the hilt of the sword Naruto was holding and the flames that had increased in power from the wind followed and suddenly the shape of a bird appeared with Naruto being in the center. The power of the gates being released was the only thing keeping him from being hurt or killed. Madara saw it and had a flashback, yes I can do that and I will give you this warning before I do it. If you have me do this when the time comes you shall be destroyed by the firebird of legends for an act of crimes you and your descendants will do. Madara said, so the legendary firebird has come to kill me for mine and my descendants' crimes just like Kyuubi said. We shall see. Restriction seal Kai. And suddenly his full power was released. It was not until he reached his full power till he realized he was not the stronger of the two as he believed. As he was falling toward the huge phoenix shape on the canyon floor, Naruto jumped into the air still holding onto the hilt of his sword making the fire around him fly with him as they approached each other. Madara closed his eyes and Naruto looked at him and Madara entered the fire and was being burned as he approached the center where Naruto was and as they got closer Naruto threw the hilt of the sword and it embedded into Madara's heart and his own energy allowed him to continue out of the bird of fire that had stopped going up and was now going down with Madara. As Naruto cleared the bird he pulled out a Hiration Kunai and threw it to a tree near the rest of the ninja and flashed away right as Madara hit the canyon floor and the fire incinerated everything on the canyon turning it into a huge sheet of ice. Even the water in the valley stood no chance as it was vaporized. Naruto appeared near the tree and was panting and breathing hard as everyone ran over to check on him. Kyuubi was the first to arrive and said it's finished Shinigami seal it. The Shinigami appeared and walked to Naruto and pulled out a sword and plunged it into Naruto's heart and the sword vibrated and glowed as the power from Naruto quickly left and then the Shinigami removed the sword and a seal appeared over Naruto's heart and he said it is done. He has only one tail's worth of chakra and that is all he will ever have. And then faster than anyone could see the Shinigami plunged his sword into Gar seal and said it's time to go Shikaku. The world of mortals shall not have immortals mess with them again. And the seal shattered as energy flew out of Gara and a new seal appeared. The Shinigami said he also has one tail of power and that is all he will ever have. Now for you three. You have anywhere from a few minutes to 100 years, use it wisely. And he disappeared. Naruto gasped and said, QB, what about? QB stopped him by saying, relax, enjoy your life, kit. Me and my kind are no more and the curse you had to live with shall never be passed on again. Make me proud. And he faded away. Naruto smiled and fell asleep as everyone gathered around him and looked at each other and Anko grabbed Naruto as did Kurinai and they started to carry him back followed by everyone else. Twelve years later in an academy classroom a man with a scar across his face said and that is how the threat of the demons was removed from the world class. A kid stood up with a Sharingan eye and said that's a crock of shit. There's no way someone could do that and I don't like the way my family looks in that story. A boy with blonde hair blue eyes said really would you like to see the valley that my dad turned to glass Uchiha? A girl with blonde hair said it's a true story. Anyone who thinks it's a lie can have their balls frozen off by me. Making an ice cycle appear in her hand. A boy with brown hair and blue eyes said my family is the strongest in the world. Look at the Hokage Mountain if you don't believe me. Five of the six faces up there are my relatives. The last is my father's. The kid with the Sharingan said, Humph, you just try and make yourself look good for everyone else. A woman walked in with pink hair and said, Little Sasuke, what did I tell you about insulting the Hokage family? If it was not for them, you would not have been born. Little Sasuke just humphed and crossed his arms and brooded and the woman sighed and said, How the hell did you get you uncle's attitude? I know your father Itachi is not like that. A boy with blue hair and a dog said, Yeah, cause he's a vegetable making everyone laugh. Just then a flash of flames appeared in the room and the Rokudame Hokage appeared and said enough. You should all be ashamed of laughing at him like that. It's not his fault so stop. Erisher I am Irika. I told you to quit acting all high and mighty or else I will make you all up your weights. The three kids paled and said yes father. 
The Hokage looked at the kid with a dog and said Hayashi your mother would also be upset with you for picking on someone else because they are different. You above all others should know what that's like because you are the first of your family with blue hair. Hayashi said sorry Hokage. The teacher walked over and asked how is everything Naruto. Naruto said fine Arika sensei just fine. The leaf village has never been better. In the corner of the room the pink haired woman said thank you Naruto. Naruto said sure Sakura keep Sasuke out of trouble you hear me. Sakura nodded and Naruto said and don't paint the Hokage monument again. Unless you use washable paint Sasuke easier to clean. Sasuke smirked and said thank you Hokage-sama. And Naruto disappeared in a swirl of flames appearing back in his office. Ibiki looked at Naruto and said was that really necessary? Naruto said yes our Ambu have been getting lazy and we are hosting the Chunin exams this time around. I don't want them to fall asleep in front of our clients. Ibiki smiled and said only you would make training out of pranking. Naruto smiled as he put his feet on his desk and said it did miracles for me. Making both men laugh before Ibiki walked out of the office. Naruto looked at the Hokage Mountain and said I got all my dreams QB. I have seven children who are all great my parents and grandparents my four lovely wives being Hokage and nobody looks at me with hate or fear anymore. My life could not get any better. Naruto four wives who came from the side office said actually it can. We have something to tell you. Naruto looked at them and said really what? They looked at each other and each pulled out a pregnancy test that showed each were positive and they said together we're each pregnant. Naruto paled as he opened a drawer beside his desk and pulled out a scroll that said emergency escape on it and he said I think a war is getting ready to start. I need to go check. Tell Sonate she's off vacation. CYA. And jumped out the window only for a barrier to stop him as he fell on his butt. He turned and smiled and said so when are they due? The look he got from them all told him one thing. He screwed. The End Thank you for your views, likes, subscriptions, and overall support of my ongoing efforts to bring great content to all of you. Check out my Patreon for more mature fanfiction. The link is in the description and like everywhere on my channel.